You don't need any intro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, What's going on YouTube? I'm joining my mate Wesley down here at Cudmore Fisheries today. Rob's come all the way from Scarborough today. He's one of my first subscribers on the channel. I've done a couple of videos at Cudmore before. Me and my dad came uh, last year and he had my PB catfish out of here. Rob's not had a catfish before so it'd be nice for him to get a cat. There's uh, cats up to about 70, 80 pound in here. Cat to about 30 and potentially a sturgeon uh, that's not confirmed so Plenty of nice fish in here. Rob wanted to try it. As I'm going to show you on the footage now, we just about managed to get sat up and get the rods out before it absolutely started to bucket it down. It's calmed off a bit now, so we're filming a bit of an intro for you. Nice and warm today as well, I think, so we're looking good. Yeah, it's uh, it's mild, obviously. It's been freezing temperatures. There have been fish coming out of here. We, we know a few anglers that we've seen on Facebook that have, have had eight or nine carp come out, so we should fingers crossed being for a decent night we've both got two rods out each i've got a ronnie rig out on one side and then a, a snowman on the other yours is similar isn't it you got yeah, two ronnies out i've gone with a helicopter set up on one with a chod on a uh, short chod uh, top with maggots with the pop on and my right one is a ronnie rig yeah. that's also top with maggots topping the baits with maggots at this time of year can be pretty effective obviously it gives a bit of movement it'll draw a catfish in if there's a catfish moving by just that little bit of movement um, Rob's brought some worms as well for us to try so we could top with worms if I wanted to fish a, a slightly bigger pop-up or whatever so that's an option I just want to show you this uh, little memento down here that uh, <laughs> that what you say your, your nephew, nephew made for you Ezra, so. so this is what Ezra's made for Rob little good luck charm there so fingers crossed we get a fish Rob's got half his uh, Half his rod's submerged there, so it'll stop the swans taking them out. So bad before. Yeah, <laughs> which you'll see in the footage. We had a, a, a swan chasing the bait boat before, but I'm all set up. I'm mostly targeting the carp today. I've not really got a, a catfish rig out, like a proper catfish rig with big baits. So, fingers crossed, we managed to get a carp between us, hoping for a PB. What do you think? I reckon yeah. we'll get one today, lad. Yeah. Go for the, ca the carp first. Then we'll get the cats in, I think, if, well, maybe tomorrow. It's, See how the, how the carp are going first. That's actually, it's always a pretty good technique, that, I think. If you go for the carp, you end up getting a cat anyway, but... Yeah, that's his uh, little memento, so hopefully that catches the fish today. Along with the, uh, the Westies Angling uh, Lucky Hoodies. <laughs> I've got my action camera ready to go as well. He's fully kitted out with an action camera. YouTube specialist now. <laughs> I can't believe I'm an influencer. <laughs> <laughs> it's all he's ever dreamed of. <laughs> but it was a long drive for you today, wasn't it? It was, yeah, about three and a half hours. So three and a half hours to come fishing with my ugly mug. From Scarborough. From Scarborough. From sunny Scarborough to here. <laughs> <laughs> so absolute trek, but there's, there's not really much up your way, is there, in terms of... Yeah, there's a few good fisheries, like some top about 20 pound or so with carp, but not really, like anything no. spectacular. Not part of the, I travel. We both got here when we were both absolutely covered in mud and stuff, so it, it looks like we're filthy, we are. We just tried to get everything set up and uh, get everything in the bivvies. <laughs> Rob's got his, his uh, fishing trainers on, yeah. so. Yeah, just fingers crossed, we're waiting for a bite now. We'll do a bit of a cook up later. We've got some burgers and sausages and whatnot. We've got a couple of beers, so we'll make the most of it while we're here. There's plenty of fish topping on the water. I'll show you the water now. We're getting literally a scream as you go in there. It's happened before. <laughs> a few other guys fishing. A couple of lads on the left hand side of us and uh, two lads in the bay over there. But nobody to our right hand side. I think I'm going to shift my rods over to the right hand side and Rob's going to fish a bit more to this side because this is the deeper part here at Cudmore. And then there's shallow bays and stuff like that dotted around. But fingers crossed, we get a fish for you at least. That's all we're aiming for. We'll save the blank and then hopefully we get a few more after that.
So we've just come down here just to have a nosy at it before we start fishing, but nobody else on. We're just trying to figure out where the deeper parts are. Now, whether the fish will be there at this time of year or not, we don't know, but we're just having a nosy and we'll see where we want to set up. Is it different? Yeah. Deeper parts are out from these pegs over here to Watts Island. And then we're potentially these bubbles coming up that we've just seen. Just getting everything out of the car. Properly packed in. It's mad how much you have to take with you when you're going <laughs> when you're going specimen fishing, isn't it? So I'll get as much down as I can in one go. As you come into Cudmore, obviously you've got your uh, your toilet block and your canteen facility there. Rob's just taking his stuff down to his peg. I've loaded everything up on the barra. Oh, it's quite a bit of a walk to the peg. There is a bit of a drop off point around the left hand side, but it's as long as short to be quite honest with you. So I think this is the easiest way. Probably have to do two trips, that's it. If you haven't watched the other video where me and my dad fished on Cudmore, I'll put a link in the top right hand corner for you now. Awesome fishery for specimen fishing. One of the best in the UK, in my opinion. Some cracking fish in here, cracking cats, cracking carp. That's where we fished last time. My dad fished on that opposite side. And I fished over there. Me and Rob are fishing on that opposite bank, which I'll show you in a second. Right. So we've just come down and we've picked a couple of pegs that we think we want. There's nobody else on the lake. So we've just come and claim these. Put some bags down. Like when you're on holiday and you put towels on there. On bed chairs. On bed chairs. But yeah, so we're going to flip to see who has this peg and who has the one over. So no, you call it then. Uh, heads what, for left, head, tails heads, for right. Heads for left, yeah. Go on then. This is for you? Yeah. Tails on tails. the right. Tails, okay. I'm on left. All right, there we go. Sorted. Sweating. That's all stuff down. I'm just going to get it set up in the swims that we wanted, so that's a good thing. Got here well early though. <laughs> just turned about one o'clock now. Well, I'm going to get the bivvy set up and we'll get some rods out. We'll discuss obviously techniques that we're going to be using today, how we're both fishing it. Obviously, we're going to be using the bait boat getting the rigs on pinpoint accuracy hopefully there we're bivvies up rob's got his west lake bivvy up and he's put his winter skin on i've not actually used my uh winter skin yet so we'll get that out and have a look at it see what it looks like i've only ever been uh specimen fishing in the warmer months right let's get that on I've just got set up. I'm just about to put a rig on for the carp. So I'm going to put one rig out for the carp, one rig out for the cats. On the carp, I'm just using a Grace Prodigy two and a quarter test curve rod. So I'm not going full carp rod. More than strong enough to deal with anything. Probably up to about 30 pounds. This rod. It's for river barbel at the end of the day. And I'm just using a turbo German rig. If you want to know how to tie this, I'll put a video in the top right hand corner for you. Really simple to tie. And then on the other one, we're going to put something out that's a little bit more substantial with a bigger bait on and hopefully get a cat. So let's put that tail rubber back over that quick chain swivel just to stop that rig coming off. And that's really simple, really incognito. It's a running rig. And I'm going to put a big wafter on that. And that's how we're starting off. I've got a big pink wafter here. I've got a tiny little swivel that's on the shank of the hook. And I'm just going to thread this 18 mil pink wafter down that floss. Pull it through the other side. There we go. So that's on that swivel and that's going to be able to spin freely. And I'm just going to top it off with maggots. So let's trim this down a touch. And you've got a couple of actual needles so I don't burst the maggots. And then I thread them on. 
Put a big bunch of maggots on here. Again, just try not to burst them. This is just going to give it some movement and hopefully attract us a fish in. Putting loads on here. Just accounting for the fact that some of them are going to come off. Have you got some red ones? I've got some in the Yeah, it's in top of. Uh, oh! My guess. Uh, it's in top of one of these. I think, and then just, just plop it out to around the island where I'll see them showing. It's probably a shout to be fair. Just to get one going, then we'll get the boat out. <laughs> Might just start your swim off and get some fish interested. There we go. A little bit tricky to start with, but once they're on, they're on. Just then just do a couple of granny knots over the top. Just to hold them in place. So a few will come off, but it don't matter. Don't tight, don't tighten it down too hard. The knots, and then put your needle somewhere safe, and just trim it off there. And there we go. And that's ready to go out. That's perfect. It's caught my finger, so hook sharp. Rain's coming down now. Let's get the bait boat out. Pop that onto that strong. Velcro, there we go. Oh. Bloody hell. Left my coat in the car as well. Cracking flags when we started. Jesus. Wait till this rain eases off a touch. Maggots are wriggling away. Right. Right folks, boat's on. Sure, my uh, hook bead's in the right place. Not like I'm casting it out, it won't go through a million times, but I'll just stop it getting tangled, I think, and put a handful of stuff in as well. Don't want to overfeed. Right, let's try it then. Not caught up round anything, is it? Mm, that's not sitting right, is it? it needs to tighten up a bit. On top Swing that up. It seems to be hanging that way. You can't tighten them. That's screwed, but you got your hand on now. Right I think that arm needs to be the other way around. Can you not tighten that bit there? No. The right it, it just spins. No, no. I think that arm needs to be the opposite way around. I think it needs to go outwards and down. I'm not even got a rig out yet. It's horrendous. 
absolutely horrendous. <laughs> Typical British weather today. We've got absolutely blazing sunshine, but it's also hammering it down. Welcome to the UK. Do you want to put a bit more sweet bait in to drop with it more? No, I'm not. It's either the arm that was weighing it down or the uh, the wire. Right, so I'm just connecting to the deeper and waiting for GPS. You're going to have to put your line just to, on this side of the door. Yeah, that deep is not working, it's just on its side. This rain can do one. Can't make its mind up. That's what I'm going for it as well. Yeah, it's not it's not picking anything up that deeper. Maybe it would would have been better as it was before. <laughs> what do you think? Straight out there. Uh keep going. Do we like another like sort of twenty? That's one's chasing it. Do another twenty meters. No, the swan's gonna get it. Are you getting a note off the deep one at all? No. I think I had it on the right way. I reckon it's got a. It wants to be this one that stays tight, doesn't it? Do you not think it's the wire that's throwing it off? Unless you turn it round, so when it's sat that way, so the wire will pull it. That it just spins. That one to me wants to, if you could, if you could fix that, it'd be alright because then it, that'd move around and it'd still be sat there, it? That's what's making it go that way, is this joint, isn't it? Mm. So I'll tighten that up. Yeah. I'll see if I can. Um, you sort it out for yours, mate, it's fine. <clears throat> you leave it all me to it. <laughs> This rig that I'm putting on now is just a slightly longer rig for the cats. Get myself enough line off to work with. Because I'm going to tie this directly on with a uni nut. Right, so. Little snowman rig going out on this one for the cats. A longer hook length. Probably should have put this out of my cat rod as well, but it is what it is. Right, I'll let you do the, the boat. So I've got stuff in the middle and then the thing. So left hand one, hold it down, it releases the middle trap door. Yeah. The right hand one, hold it down, it releases the back door so you can pull your rig off. Um, and then forward, yeah, you don't go backwards with it when you've got a rig on. Because you, 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 your line can get caught in a propeller. So I don't think it would with the rig tubing on, but um so it's kind of mapped it that's what that lad was saying it's 3.7 meters there in that hole it was saying we're there right yeah i think i've actually got one about there i know that's where i dropped that yeah the second one. The, the, there's definitely stuff closer in so you want this rod i reckon about there about three quarters of the way out to Ireland. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of in between the two islands. Maybe in line with that big tree there where it forked off and there's one straight up. Yeah. I'd get it in line with that. One of them over yeah. that way. And then and then one of them just straight out, maybe three quarters of the way to the yeah. island. My right one, I'm going to pull in, I think. And maybe try and have 
keep one there, I think that's where my left one is, isn't it? And I might I might try somewhere over here for one. Or if not, up by island. So if you get one. On, like more this side of island and then one over there. Yeah. And then we've both got a bit of island to go out, haven't we? But yeah, I reckon we try and get one of these ones here. Okay. Yeah, this one. Right. Well, I'll probably need to bring that one in then. Well, no, that's a straight in line, isn't it? Yeah. So, so what, go, move this one over? Yeah, move that one over and go that And go way. straight yeah. out that way. Okay. Right, if you look, that middle tree in it. So you want to be in line with. So you want on edge of it. So the edge in line with that, I reckon. And then to the right, then we'll scamp bottom. It's not okay. going to be that far out, is it? Right. You've got a cart feeding right in front of you, a bit bumpy. <laughs> Probably is. Right. Pick it. It's got a signal as well. Yeah. Do you want to just try edging boat forward? So that's um, about one and a half meters. Uh, try taking it left to touch. That's it. Pretty much in line with that big tree now. I reckon you'll, be, you'll have something coming up in next door. Oh, well, there's loads of fish there, mate. Is it? There. Keep going. No, keep going. <laughs> keep going. Uh, on the le left to touch. There you go. There, there. Right there. Yeah, there. I'll show you how I do them in a minute. Yeah, I might just fucking about with it. A little bit. <laughs> right, so Bailiff's just come round and he's told us we're in best pegs, so um, that fills me with a little bit of confidence. <laughs> yeah. So they've, they've maggots eaten, they've eaten yeah. the maggots off. So it might be that it is still pretty packed with small fish, but obviously they need bait fish with. Ah! Oak sharp. <laughs> oh my god, that's proper got me. Yeah. They need bait fish because obviously there's pike in here and there's uh, there's cats that need something to eat. Right, so I'm going to get the bait boat. We'll get Rob's rigs back out for the night. So he's going to go into this corner, maybe, and then have another one, potentially a bit more over to my side of the swim there, and then I'm going to go a bit more to the, the right-hand side. We're going to recast back out and we'll probably leave them in then through the night. Had a little bit of a tidy in the bivvy. Could do with a bit more of an eating up, but it's 33 pound a night here at Cudmore. They put the prices up. It was 25, but there's some cracking fish in here, so it is worth it. Well, we'll tell you if it's worth it. It definitely won't be worth it if we've not caught anything by the end of uh, this 48-hour session that we're booked on. I can imagine it's going to be a really cold night tonight, but I've got some thermals and what have you. What if you soak them in? Uh, the almond. Pink the almond. almond. Stain your fingers though, doesn't it? Yeah. I got some back at car over there. It's white, it's not good. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna bother putting maggots on top of it. They'll just get munched off, I think. Yeah. I've got a sweet mix and a spicy mix. This is a sweet mix. So we'll put a handful of this in the central upper. And probably some maggots as well. God, they stink them. They've got wet, haven't they? Yeah. They're all foamy. <laughs> That's hanging. I'm just excited to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. He's just got this on a bit of an helicopter rig. 15 pound mainline, yeah? Yeah. Right, okay, so I'm gonna get the uh, deeper app up on the phone. And then switch our boat on. Switch the receiver on. Yeah, needs a bit of putty on. 
Yeah, I had some arms off. You just joined the uh, Chirps Wi-Fi. I think we're losing maggots. Right, it's connected there. So he's just checking that he's uh, critically balanced in the water. Looks good. Do you want to put a PVA on it as well? Yeah. You might want to put some more maggots in as well. There's quite a few in there, but... Oh. <laughs> 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 Do just put in a little bit of a PVA bag that we've tied up on the end. Couple of reasons for doing that. One that it keeps your rig free. And at least you know you've got some bait around your hook as well. And then you just open your bail arm. And then Rob will tell me when he wants to uh, drop the rig. So we go in. Look out to the left, yeah. There's a drop off there. So if there is a fish on that drop off. There was, not there? That's been bubbles coming up all around there as well. I think the bubbles were about there. Keep going out, keep going a bit left a bit more. Like that, yeah. So it's about one and a half metres there. Why don't you change it to foot? I don't think you can. I think you can, surely. I reckon. Out to the left a bit. Yeah. See where them bolts have just come up to the left? Yep. Thought about that, Lou. Look at all them fish there. I love it now. It's a bit silly, that's why I've got the helicopter on. Yeah, it's gone down. So, a couple of clicks. You down? Yeah. Spin it round. Oh, yeah, lo loads of fish there, mate. Have you got the other bit out? Yeah. Um, as well. It's probably just going to leak out, but... That's going a little bit deeper there. It's quite a lot of... The, yeah, let's have it there. That's, can you see how that's dropping off? Yeah. And that's where they sat? That'll do. There. And then it goes to like a... Right, okay. Are you out? I am, yeah. That's... Oh! Look at where you are there. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's, the, that's the spot. Bob's fishing a heli-safe method. I've got three running rigs. Uh, it's slightly different, but I have to have a slightly different setup. I need, I need my, my bait runner drag set really tight so that a fish can only just take line. I'm going to get mine back out and uh, we'll leave them for the night. We'll get a couple of beers probably and maybe make some food. Maggots are uh, still on that one. So Rob's got some worms. <laughs> He's hoping for a bit of a sponsor yeah, here, I think. I'm, I'm not saying I'm after a sponsor, but Willie's worms, the best a man can get. <laughs> <laughs> so Willie's worms, if you're hearing this, send Rob some free worms, please. <laughs> Love it. How much bigger are these moggy munchers than that? Quite a bit bigger. Hmm. Yep, let's do it. Let's get a moggy muncher on. Talk us through what you're doing then on the action cam. So I've just trimmed a section off the top there just so the, the pop-up sits flat against it. Just gives a bit more clearance. So probably put about that amount of pop-up on and that'll just sit together like that. <laughs> This is got 
Weston's special fish solution on it. And I'm hoping. I'm hoping that I'm not just filming your feet. I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping that this, uh, this hair is going to be long enough. Have you got the extender stops? The little plastic ones that might do you. If you don't I think it'll be about right, this. To be honest. Once we've uh, pulled that back in. This is definitely not going in things ever. You just shouldn't ever put them down because you never find them again. Let's pull that into the top of the bait a bit. Pull the moggy muncher down, that's perfect that. There we go, that'll either get a big bloody carp <laughs> or a cat. There's a bloody Westy's angling tail gone. And then another one, more aimed at the carp. Look at them, them maggots have walking back up, aren't they? They're still on their front first, but I'll get this out first. Uh. Where do you think the cat rig's better? I think cat rig's probably better straight out here. What first one? Check my hook point before it goes back out, looks sharp. Nice big parcel of PVA. The fish mix in there, over the top of it. On top of some worms and some maggots. Let's put a few of them fishy boilers in as well. And some maggots. Well. Oh no, yeah, they have, yeah. <laughs> Tons of bait out there, but right, it is what it is. What's that called? Fishing for one bite at a time? <laughs> Do you want to hold me for? So. Oh, I don't like how my rig's sitting across the deeper. A little bit back. Oh, 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 there we go. So you don't start to come back in now. I don't know, I think it needs to come back. We've gone too if far. You, if you go back, go over at the same spot oh, again. Oh, oh. oh, there you are. It's clear as well, I couldn't bottom. i get it there. That's your spot. You think? Yeah. It's clear as a whistle on bottom and fish are around it apparently. Yeah, let's do that then. That looked about that hot spot as well where that lad was saying. I think rig's gone down there. Maybe just like three or four. Oh, he's not happy about that. Try not to get the old tentacles caught in the, the rig. There we go. Let's get that. I think that'll do well. I've said that about every rig, and we're not at a fish <laughs> yet, but that'll look, that'll look mint on bottom because you just get that flash of that pink and then the pink and then. Around it. Oh, sharp. It's always a good sign. Check in, mark it. Up. Oh, it'd be right. It it's a wafter, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It'll just sit flat. It just looks like a bite, a bite in there, doesn't it? Put some oil, hemp oil. Definitely missed that. <laughs> yeah, it's just coming straight out of that. <laughs> Right, let's get it out. Psh. Psh. It's on full power. Left. Yeah, the the. Oh, 
Does it come out? Right, so that's all four rods cast out for the evening. Uh, make some food now. Right, let's have a bit of a Wester's angling cook up here. I've got one of these double sided pans. Just going to do a couple of burgers, I think. It's going to be very sketchy this because uh, it's gone dark. I've got the camera out more so I can see what I'm doing, to be honest. and ground bait hands as well. I've got some baby wipes. Good thing to take if you're going night fishing. Put some baby wipes with you. Right. Let's get these burgers open. Them. So we're going to have burgers, and black pudding as well, don't judge, a couple of black puds on as well. That's that ready to cook, got a fresh bottle of gas here. stove thing as well. You forgot it? No I've, no, I've got it. Oh, you got it. I've got, I've got, I've brought three of these. Just in case this one was shit. That looks decent, this one. Looks alright, I've just got that. Yeah. I've got another two or three full throw pens as well. Same as these ones? Uh, Corbin ones. Oh, yeah. It's the same, Alan. Yeah, they're, they're, they're probably better actually. These were cheaper. Got the light. Yeah. I might even have one of here. I've got loads of them, but I just keep them. It's like temperature gauges, isn't it? It's like on full. We're down to like. Is it? Yeah. Where I get lost, I'm after pants. First time. <laughs> <laughs> Come in and, oh, oh my oh. fucking days! <laughs> no, Come in, in the shot and show me your pants. <laughs> get them, eh? Your festival pants. These are my festival <laughs> slash carpet pants. <laughs> yet to catch a carp in them today. <laughs> What's your burger that with grass on it? I don't know if I like this stove. I've got, I've got it's, it's more sturdy than the others, but I the others are more powerful. You don't really need it mega hot though, do you? Just nah. that burning shit. We got the old Morrison's uh, watermelon bag for life there. Look at this. Sponsor Tell we're not bro. pros. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Carter started selling them forty quid ago. Do it with light, okay. Sticking either. I'm impressed with that. It keeps all the juices in and all. NGT, double sided pan. Not sponsored. <laughs> Could be though. Could be. <laughs> Get in touch. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep dropping all kinds of brands on it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Someone's going to pick you up eventually. If Rob's not talking much, it's because he's got a bit of a tooth infection as well. That's why his face is all swollen. That's why I look like Quasimodo. <laughs> no, I'm impressed with this pan, you know. It's good, isn't it? It's not sticking. He says, 
Why are we black puddings on top of each other now? How's that happened? Can't afford these tensors from Bradford. Got to use your fingers. It's a good little, yeah, I was going to say you can just do that. It's a good little combat setup, though, isn't it? Not all the zits or sandwiches. Than, I mean, uh, there's nothing about my setup today that's compact, but. <laughs> See everything. Is there any place around it right? It looks like around the corner, but we can't see. Ah! Uh, I'll edit that out. I don't even spin it. I'm not very used to that yet. That oil is hot. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I'll give Bring sauce as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, here are. What have you gone for? Just everything. No, just to make just to make sauce. I'm just to make it as good. I reckon tonight. If feature, <laughs> feature the old West's angling. Uh, Get one. Fishing crocs. Look at how furry and warm they are inside, eh? If we don't catch tonight, we'll send Baybot out for a bit of a mission tomorrow and make sure we find like absolute dynamite clear spots. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll step it up a notch. Yeah. We've just thrown them out tonight, I think. Even when we, when we had the boat out, we found, we found some like deep, nice spots when the fish finder would put them on it. So. Look at them. Got a piece fit for a king. What, Fuddenberg is even a thing? Is now. I would have thought so, yeah. Yeah, they're good. There we go. Where's the sangling cock up? Bit of a tip as well. Before you sit down and start eating the food, get yourself one of your baby wipes. Or a couple. On the pan, get your tongs. Just give it a clean off. All kinds of tips on this channel. <laughs> yeah, cooking tips, fishing tips, not working yet. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've, we've got to give the cooking tips because <laughs> nobody will be taking the fishing tips right now. <laughs> This little setup that we've got here is in the middle of both both of our bivvies. I'm just checking that um, bobbins aren't moving. <laughs> just made the ultimate shelter there. We've doubled up on the brolly. Let's see if I can show you from the outside. <laughs> Professionals, guys. Professionals. <laughs> oh, that was a bit of a rough night's sleep. Um, it's just turned about half five in the morning. I've had a bit of a cat run. First thing this morning, maybe about five o'clock. Sort of very, very slow take. So I lifted into it and there was nothing on the end, which if you know, if you go fishing for cats, it's quite a common thing. Uh, sometimes you just don't hook into them. We're just getting up now. I'm going to make a coffee and whatnot, and fingers crossed, I've got both rigs recast back out, so fingers crossed they're still on the feed. There's been a, a couple of takes dotted around this morning, so must be morning bites here. Oh, let's get a coffee. 
Rob's just having a recast. I've just had another bleep on the right hand rod that I've just recast back in. Got the coffee on, got the Westies Angling Lucky Crocs on, so don't see why we ain't gonna get a morning fish. <laughs> are you changing your rig or are you just. No, it's all good. Up sharp a bit. Did not bad cast that. Just where I wanted it. Oh, he's got, he has got some, mat. Oh, yeah. I might have got it in sling before I saw him pull it in. Is it a cat or a cat? Fella on the opposite bank over there who's fishing in the bay, which is actually shallow. <laughs> he's had quite a few uh, runs. Yeah, he had one run late last night, didn't he? Yeah. It's so, a mate. Up pretty long, up, kettle's bob. It's a good kettle, this. Collapsible as well. Hey, bit of coffee. Highlight of the day. Find my spoon, so that's your uh, use the old spatulas. <laughs> Such a classy operation. He <laughs> needs a head torch when you've got croc torch. <laughs> Look at that, eh? Never lose your shoes again in your bivvy. <laughs> really slutch, innit? Black Pearl's up and running. <laughs> We're on. Rob's going to send a worm rig out, so. Yeah, go there. Yeah. Oh, there's all your bait going down. Can you see it? Oh, sick. That's awesome. There's a bit of structure there. Just to the right, there is a bit, there's a bit of structure. Yeah. Harder bottom, about there. Oh, you yeah. see all that bumps, the bumps. There's something there, isn't so it? We'll go back over that. West is giving me an action cam to film the wonderful lake. Where of which absolutely f all is going on. So we wait. Just got this one, the right one on a Ronnie, over towards the island with an IB essential cell pop up on. And then the left one, I've just changed it to a worm rig on a bit of foam, about 10 worms. Dropped a load of maggots in with bait boat and worms as well, with soil and stuff in it, a bit of glug. So fingers crossed, something happens. We get some action for this action camera. Me and Rob were just saying how um, we're impressed with this bait boat for the price, definitely. It takes a little bit of getting used to using it with the deeper, but I think we've just about got it now. Sorted. And we've been using that since we got here, and um, it's still on full battery, so. Trips, yeah. Every time, so and a bit of a scan round. Yeah, and a bit of a scan round as well. Yeah, decent. So we've had nothing for a few hours. Uh, Rob's going to pop his zig rig out. Okay. Like that, right? Ooh, switching. This when you switch over straight to zigs if it rips. It is, isn't it? Yeah, there's something switching on it. 
wonder if someone's grabbed it on the way down. It could do. That's what things whatever are like. It, whatever though, it is, it's left it. They're really finicky bites, aren't they? I think when you get them on zigs. That's a good sign. Yeah. Oh, he's had another rock to the bank. Oh, he's... he's fishing this rod over to the uh, the left hand margin, right on the far bank, past this island here, right to the far bank. And he's this is his third run. So he's doing something right, that fella. Right, so I'm going to start making excuses now in the event that we don't catch. <laughs> so we're in the deeper part here and uh, this fella over the other side is fishing in the shallower bay. So maybe it's that the fish have uh, moved out of the deeper water uh, into the shallow bays just because we've had a mild few days. We might get them back tonight in deeper water though. Yeah, could do. Uh, it seemed like bite time here was uh, early morning. There was quite a few bites around the lake in quick succession at around half four, five o'clock, and then it just died off again. I had nothing through the night, not even any liners or bleeps or anything like that. You had one, you had a, a liner or a bleep at around six in the morning, yeah. later on in the morning, so. Pretty sure this is a cat, he's been playing it a good 15 minutes now. I'm gonna put some uh, dedicated cat rigs out tonight. Soon as I know the cats are feeding, uh, I'm gonna go out with the 30 pound line, put some really big hook baits on. Probably about a quarter of a can of uh, luncheon meat on one, and one of these moggy munches on the other. I'll show you. Which I've got sitting in glug. I've had cats on these before at Brookside. There you go, the big ones, 24 mil. And what I usually do, because it's quite silty, I'll top it with a Scopex squid pop-up, 20 mil one. And on the other one, luncheon meat topped with half a pop-up, just to keep the luncheon meat on. I usually put a bit of rig tubing on the hair as well, just because obviously luncheon meat's very soft and easy to cut through. So that's what I'm going to be doing tonight. We're going to go all out for the cats, put a load of bait out on the bait boat. What was that then, Rob? And we'll see if we can get a, a moggy. Go all out for the cats, try and save the uh, the blank. I'm hoping that Rob gets a fish, to be honest, because he's driven God knows how many miles to uh, I'll tell you. come and fish here. How many? Um, how many? Oh, it's not too bad. <laughs> I'll be interested to see where he uh, casts back out. I'll keep an eye on that for you. You can obviously see from uh, where I'm filming here if you wanted to go and fish that swim at any point. There's some really good facilities at Cudmore. Great toilet block. They've got a cafe as well. It's not just specimen fishing. They have a coarse fishing lake. One of the most popular in the UK. I think they had some kind of championships there at some point. Well, a couple of bits and pieces of movement. Uh, I've just had a couple of bleeps on the buzzers. Rob's had a, quite a big bleep on the uh, zig rig. Fellas in the back corner again. And I saw his cast. It's really tight to that far banking. He's hitting the cast every time perfectly. So he's fishing really accurately. I think he's just fishing single hook bait or whether he's already fed the swim up and we've not seen him feed it up with a, a spot or something but he's just popping a single hook bait right into the margin over the far corner there. I'm still pretty hopeful that we'll manage to get something, but uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll stick at it. I think we'll definitely we'll have get another something. brew, do you reckon? Yeah, it's picking up, isn't it, activity-wise? I've just Isn't been it? feeding up a swim down my margin as well with some worms, so I'm going to pop a rig down there in a little bit, a worm rig that I've got just out in the middle that's not done anything yet. So I'm going to try and feed that margin up a little bit and see what happens. Obviously when you're fishing like this, it's so tempting to question your tactics and your methods and change it up if you're not catching, but all the people around this side of the lake, so me, Rob, uh, and the two fellas on the opposite bank here, usually these are the best swims and we've not had anything. Um, I had a bit of a run this morning, like I said, I think I hit it too early or I didn't tighten my drag up enough when I struck into the bit, but it was a definite catfish run, there's no doubt about that. So. I think um, dedicated catfish rigs out tonight. I think they're only on for 24 hours over that far bank in. They're just putting the bivvies away and stuff. We've got another 24 to go. We need to get you a fish. 
I'm still going to post the video, guys, even if we don't get a fish. I know a lot of you uh, like to see the techniques and stuff like that, whether you want to use them or not. After seeing us blank, that's another story. Oh, but <laughs> so i know the weather's getting a little bit warmer now we've got a few westies angling beanies left so what we're going to do whether we catch or not in this episode i'm going to be giving away two westies angling beanies so if you're following the channel you know exactly what you need to do to be in with a chance of winning one of those drop a comment down below uh, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and share the video with an angling friend i'll just pick a couple of people at random once the video gets uh three or four thousand views and uh contact you and we'll get you a Wes's angling beanie posted out. Let me show you an example. Where's mine? Mine's covered in muck. <laughs> Absolutely sludgy. It's a good job that they've got this AstroTurf down, otherwise it'd be a nightmare. I'm a very messy angler. That's my bivvy. Everything all over the place. I'm not neat. <laughs> but Wes's angling beanie. Hopefully you'll get some use out of it before the weather starts uh, warming up. So that's just as a thank you from me for watching the video. Was I putting my camera voice on again then? That was much. <laughs> I think you just speak a bit louder, that's all. Yeah. Because you've got to act because you feel like you've got to project at camera, I suppose. It's clearer, isn't it? I know half the time I fucking mumble if I don't like trying. Yeah. It's uh just popped it in margin now though. Have you? Yeah, I just lowered it in and then just walked it back round. Nice day though, we were expecting quite a lot of rain and it's not done much, it put a bit down in the night but not loads. Got a little uh, congregation food hub. Oh that kettle's boiled on it actually. Oh you've already put them. It's all good mate. You've already sorted it. Don't mess about me lad. Whoops. Hands like cow's tits <laughs> <laughs> uh, What a saying. The spider's already made its web across it. Oh yeah. Come on, let's get a fish. There's a there's a big overflow here and I'm scared of putting anything past that. I mean, these are other swims, but I think with it being St. Paddy's and Mother's Day this weekend, there aren't a lot of people booked on. Um, so I don't think anybody's gonna come today, but this overflow here, this concrete and block structure, I'm scared of getting a, a catfish wrapped around that. But I'm certainly going to be fishing heavy enough. I've got my uh, heavy duty catfish rod set up to go out later. This has got uh, 30 or 40, I can't remember which one it is this one, but this has got 30 or 40 pound Berkeley big game mono one. So I'll be really able to hunker down into the catfish and get them bullied in. This is this particular rig that's aimed at cats 50 pound upwards there's cats to about 80 in here so that would be more than strong enough to bring one of them in which is what we want we don't want to lose anything if we do manage to hook them this is uh mostly a carp setup i'm pretty sure these um two and a quarter test curve grace prodigy barbel rods will be able to handle a, a catfish maybe to about 30 40 pound but the main line would break before the rods broke i would have thought I'm only fishing 15 pound main line. I'll have really good clutch on these reels as well. Getting the uh, Wes's angling crocs in as well there. Don't all be going out buying crocs now. <laughs> <laughs> these are Pen Affinity LTD 7000 reels. And like I said, loaded with 15 pound line, Daiwa sensor. And then the catfish rods that I'm using, a Sonic Vader, three and a quarter test, I think. Which is what Rob's using as well. So we're about half 12 now. I think I'm gonna have a bit of a recast and a move. So I'm gonna have probably one rod straight out still down this center line where all the fish are holding to. And then my right hand rod, I'm gonna put on the corner of this island over here with the bait boat. I'm just gonna have a worm rig on that one and probably put drop a load of worms and maggots in the margins there and a handful of pellets. Doing whatever I can today to get you a fish and then we'll uh, get our cat rigs on ready for the night at about probably six, five, six, seven o'clock, something like that. We'll decide a bit later on. So I've been running this bait boat for an hour now and you might not be able to see this but it's still, still showing 100% battery. 
keep getting single bleeps on this rod when you're fishing worms just worms popped up you do tend to get a lot of single bleeps with small fish picking up the worms this has apparently been netted quite recently so they've taken a lot of the small fish out Things to go pro Fred. <laughs> Sending the bait boat out. Right, seeing as we're not catching any fish, we're gonna do another cook up. So this is no longer Wesley's angling, this is cooking on the bank with Wesley. <laughs> so camping. <laughs> <laughs> Got some bacon. Got some good old Warburton's bread. We've got our NGT toasty maker cooker. So I'm going to cook the uh, bacon off first and then I'm going to uh, put some bread in here and then we're going to slap it together, put some cheese in the middle and make a bit of a toasty with it. Coming down, huh? For the bacon. I'm going to stick some sausages on as well, I think. So it's turning it up. Turn it round so it's on the sausage side as well. Alright, those bacon and sausage shouldn't be far off done. Bacon's definitely on its way. Let's turn these sausage. It's like it keeps the heat in this pan, so... They like cooking in their own juices. Definitely, definitely testing out the non-stick coating on these plants. Seems to be cooking around the edges better than it is in the middle. <laughs> yeah, too busy filming. Oh yeah, they're burnt. I think they'll be pretty much done. <laughs> I'm taking that. Uh... Watch out, mate. Turn that off for now. Next to each other. Sorry. Yeah. That needs some fucking old alignment. Put that on before you cook it. Yeah, that's good. It's a nice uh, tomato marinade. Tomato marinade. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Some sausage are good, even though they're cremated. <laughs> right, I think we're ready. Do the big unveil. Toasty time. Get a side look at Oh, look at them, eh? So robbers are saying that he's potentially gonna move down one swim while there's still nobody here. And fish the zigs somewhere a bit shallower over to island. Got its boiling nest. <laughs> Look at three peg fuller over here. <laughs> <laughs> Got to stay active in this game, man. <laughs> <laughs> Trying every peg up lake. Yeah. Five minutes on the fish is better than five hours away from them. <laughs> <laughs> and do you think you're on them? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll try. Beautiful lake this, isn't it? It is really nice. So many features to fish to. We just want to get a fish for you, folks. That's all we want to do. Wouldn't 
trying. I've not even seen this corner before. I've not come this far down. It's like a little wooded corner. But that's good in summer, you know. So Rob's just checked the Cudmore Facebook page and the fellow that was across from us who was catching, um, we thought he was getting cats, but he actually had three stonking carp out. He only fished it for 24 hours and it looked like he was fishing single hook baits into the margin. Now he had an 18 pound, he had an 18 pound carp, a 22 pound carp and a 27 pound common. How disheartening is that? Like this is meant, we were meant to be in the best pegs. Um, we thought we'd fish the deeper water. That's where our best chances were. It's been cold, so on and so forth. But the carp have obviously moved out of the colder water and down into the margins on the opposite side of the lake. Now, you can't write it, can you? All we can do is our best at the time of filming. What I'm gonna do tonight is just to potentially be in with a chance, I'm gonna go all out for the cats. I'm gonna have two cat rods out, one with a big slab of luncheon meat on, and one with one of the moggy munchers on and a pop-up. I think that's gonna give me my best chance of getting a fish for you all. We've got one day left, I'm in panic mode now. I'm trying not to recast every two minutes and cast around. Um, Rob's been trying zig rigs in different places across the lake. He's had one run on a zig rig and didn't manage to hook up to anything. I think that's what we need to do for our best chance of getting a fish. I think we need to go all out for the cats. With us being in the deeper water swims, we thought about moving over when those guys packed up and, and fishing that swim, but it's absolute effort. Moving all your bivvy and all your tackle, we've got set up here for a couple of nights, so it's just too much stuff to be moving around. Rob's obviously just moved his rod pod down, casting his zigs around and stuff, trying near the islands. Uh, that's his receiver that's in this little uh, bivvy tent we've got set up. The weather is warm. It, it has warmed up quite a lot this last couple of days, which has obviously pushed the carp into the margins. I still didn't expect the carp to be in the margins at this time of year, but that's where they were catching them, single hook baits, looked like a little white pop-up he were using. Really close into that far banking. If you can follow my finger there, that's an island, that's another banking, and he was catching them just on that point, fishing from that peg right over there that somebody else has now moved into, who's obviously fishing for the night. So, staying in the deeper water, we're not gonna move. I'm just gonna have two carp rigs out, I'm going to have one mid lake and one a little bit further out. I'm going to try and find a clear spot on the deeper that hasn't got any weed. And uh, just, just drop a big pile of bait there, some halibut pellets and stuff like that. Um, some really fishy oils I'm going to put down. And maggots and stuff like that. And maybe a handful of worms just to drag a catfish in hopefully. So fingers crossed we managed to get you something. But if we don't, you know, we've tried. That's just the way it goes, this type of fishing. You do kick yourself though, and you, you definitely do beat yourself up about it. I'm not a professional angler in any way, shape or form. So fingers crossed for us. Uh, we're gonna stick it out in these swims and see if we manage to get anything tonight. Tell you what folks, it's absolutely cracking the flags today. Definitely the hottest day of the year so far. I'm gonna have to uh, put my pants in shorts mode, I think. About six pair of socks on as well. I might put me croc in sports mode as well. So we don't lose one if we get a bite. It's gonna be perfect. Put some maggots in and all. Ugh. Foamy. Put some big pellets in. I've got boilies and stuff in. Yeah, go on then. I think we'll be right there. I'll walk it back, I might even put a back lead on it.
Well, it sank. So I put one of these 1.1 ounce back leads on just to pin it to the lake bed, just because it is really thick line. There we go, folks. That's the second cat rig ready to go out. 50 pound braided hook length rubber boom section just to kick it away from the lead size 4 hook big chunk of luncheon meat and I've just topped that off just to stop the luncheon meat coming off with a pop up caught numerous cats like this absolutely superb method I like using it with straight point hooks like that but I'm going to send this out drop it down uh, probably chop a few pieces of luncheon meat up put them in here Make it really smelly. Get some smelly baits in, get some glug in like I did last time. Look at what Ralph's putting out in his bait bowl. <laughs> Shark fishing, you lad. <laughs> Make this be good luck. Come on, mate. Worms at bottom and all. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get it out before all that glug goes. Take some cover and have a bevy. Yeah. Well, cat rigs are out for tonight. We've got them out just in time. <laughs> Do you want to put all your stuff in? Baby? It's only boxing, so. Right? But the heavens have opened. Have you got? So you've got a pop up out on one. Yeah, and I've still got a cat rig on the on one. On so Rob's got a cat rig out as well, uh, and on his catfish. Rig is starting off on the luncheon meat, which is a great catfish bait. For any of you people that go out there catfishing, you'll know that. Probably my favourite catfish bait. On my other one, I've got a moggy muncher and a pop up. But, oh my god, it's coming down now. Look at this. <laughs> I've got this little makeshift shelter that's just about holding up. Fingers crossed that this bit of rain brings the cats on the feed. I think I read somewhere that storms really bring catfish on the feed. I don't know whether you class this as a storm or whether it means like a summer thunderstorm or something like that. We'll see. But fingers crossed, we get a cat and we've saved the blank. I I put we deserve some. <laughs> yeah, we do deserve <laughs> we something. We've an grafted, idea. we have grafted today to try and get a bite for you, but. Sometimes it's just not the bent to be. Like I told you before, that fella had three carp over there. We didn't have any cats. We thought they were cats that he was catching, but no, they were carp. 18 pound, 22 pound, and a 27 pound carp. It's mental. Pretty sure he was just on a single hook bait, wasn't he, down the margin as well? Yeah, single hook bait. Fished tight into the margin. You just wouldn't expect it to do well at this time of year, but good for him. Shallow water as well, wasn't it? Absolutely hammering it down. A little water running off, running off the bivvy there. I'm so glad I put that winter skin on it. I've just been for a walk around. I had a chat to the uh, the blokes that are fishing now in the peg, where those guys had the three carp, and they've already had three runs. It seems like all the carp have pushed back into that bay. He said when they came here, they were all cruising around the top. So that just proves it that they are in the shallow water, they've pushed away. Maybe it's angling pressure, maybe it's the weather, the rain, the warmth. It's just pushed them back into the shallow water. Um, but what they've also told us, just for your knowledge, that uh, obviously you'll be able to see where we are here on the lake, I'm sure from the video, but we're on the far side, furthest away from the car park. Six, this is peg five. five, yeah, peg five. This is peg five, that's peg six. But this way, around probably at a middle line between here and that peg, is a gravel bar, which I think Rob's pretty much on, and we've seen it on the deeper. That's what all the, the bumps were, I think, all the way down this, this side. And uh, the fish will probably hold to that. That's where I have my cat. That's where I have my PB catfish in that sort of area. So it makes sense that I probably landed it on the gravel bar completely by accident, but... While I was around talking, Rob said that I've had a couple of savage liners, which sounds like catfish to me. But it shows you that if you fish somewhere often, you get to know the places, 
you get to know where the gravel bars are, where the, the deeper parts are. Obviously the deeper and the bait boats helped us today. And we've been pretty much there or thereabouts, but we can't help that the carp have pushed back into the shallower part and we've decided to fish the deeper part. It, it is what it is. You make a decision and you've got to stick by that decision. I'm not sure whether you can see this on the GoPro, but the night rider mode is on the Crocs. Look at this, you can see exactly where you're going. Through all the sludge. If you want to check one of your rods, you just point your toe at your rods. Yeah? <laughs> Look at this bloody clown over there. Have you seen him with his Crocs on, with torches on the fucking front? Come on, give us a dance, lad. <laughs> hey, I'm having uh, I'm having nibbles here as well. I think. <laughs> oh dear, you've been having bleeps, haven't you? I had two on left, and then one on right. It could have been settling, but the left one. Someone might be mulling around it. That's the uh, big old luncheon meat chunk. <laughs> we just found a break in the weather, so we try to get some tea in us before it starts absolutely howling down again and blowing everything away. This is just footage of what we're doing here. <laughs> we've got we've got Rob's broly pegged in with one peg just to stop it coming at us. We've got the pen to light up, which is definitely we're standing <laughs> more <laughs> we're standing more than its purpose. It is absolutely horrendous and getting worse. But on the plus side, the wind's blowing into our corner, so we might get a fish. <laughs> it was quite a fast take, though. It was like, what, a single beep then? Fingers crossed you've hooked it well, so. Yeah. If it needs to run, let it run. And, if, yeah, and when you, you can get in line on it, just steady pressure. Oh, I hope we manage to get this for you guys. I'm sure that we will. Just gonna to have to take it easy. I might go and get my bigger land in there as well. I think I, I might need it. If you're wondering guys, it's quarter past one in the morning. <laughs> but at least that rain's died off. It's freezing though. <laughs> <laughs> just found Rob with a good luck time. <laughs> Poor little bastard. I'm there Go fighting, on, a, fighting on, an absolute pal. massive cat and he's got fucking toad in my face. <laughs> Give it a kiss, see if it turns into a prince for you. <laughs> Don't they? Just walk it round to your right. That's a good one, that may be. Just check it, that's it, a little bit of pressure. Oh. Oh. Only the big enough. Yes! Time. Get in, son! <laughs> well done, Get well. in! <laughs> well done, mate. That's a, that's a really nice cat for your first one, pal. That's, um, that's, that's going on 35 pounds, I reckon. Jesus. That's a big cat. It's hard to judge them when they're coming in like that. Yeah. Right, it's alright, let's leave it in the margin. I'll go and get my big one picking that thing. We've saved the blank. <laughs> Full of snake on the blank. <laughs> so it's done it. Okay, let's see where we're going to set this on hooking that up. Oh my that's crazy. On 15 pound line. What an absolute dirty bugger. Nice. Oh mate. <laughs> that is so slimy. Wow. <laughs> Do you want to try and lift it? <laughs> this is funny. His first time lifting a cat. 
Not easy to do it. Oh mate, that's a cracking fish. Oh yeah. There we go. Keep it held up as long as you can. This is absolutely vile. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> They're hanging out there. Go again? Yeah, one more. Just got it in focus. Look at that, absolute beast. <laughs> <laughs> that is an absolute beast of a catfish. Let's get it weighed, Rob. Yeah. Is it all parking off? Yeah. 40, 5, 45 pound pretty much on the nose, that mate. So we'll have to, the net will be maybe a pound. It's quite a big net. Isn't it? Yeah. So, well, I don't think I'm going back to sleep after this. Okay. <laughs> well done, mate. That has made it worth the hundred and twenty pound on tickets. <laughs> there it goes, back into the deep. Yes, yes. <laughs> get in, in the lucky Western <laughs> angling hoodie. <laughs> oh, I'm really. That's a drop back. <laughs> hey, look, what's going on there? Yeah, you're seeing this as we're seeing it, guys. It's weird. She's into a fish, I think. Yeah, she's in. It's just gone after three o'clock when I've just got my monster in. <laughs> oh, it's fucking loads of line in this. Oh, fucking hell. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a good one. Yeah. Do you want to try and net it? Probably? My line's... Th there's another lead clip in it. the word. How's it look on the camera? Yeah you bang on. Look at that. Is it's mouth alright isn't it? So is. I'll just get some carp curse stuff for it. What a fish. What a fish. Always carry carp cut around with you guys. Always. Oh, it's ripped into its mouth. So that should heal up nicely. Beast. Oh. What's your life now? Yeah. It's hard to get a finger of it on the video, but look at that fish. I'm struggling to lift her. What are you saying, Rob? I reckon over 30, 32. Surely not. £24.10. So with the net, £24. Yeah. <sighs> oh. Get back to wow.
Make sure you're not carrying around anybody else's ridge for a while. <laughs> awesome. Is that a PB, mate? Hey. PB mate. Yes, good lad. First 20. First 20, 24 pound. Well, awesome. Man. So let's take a look at this rig that she was towing around with her. Right. So straight away you can notice they've, they've jammed it's a hybrid lead clip and they've jammed this on so far that there, just... it wouldn't, there were no chance that lead could ever come off. So when you're doing it properly, you wet it and you want it just on about that much. Just so the fish, about five when it mil. bolts off, you want to you want to lose your lead every time. You don't want to be you don't want to be. That's all you want it to do. You don't want to be jamming it round because somebody has made a death rig there. Not only that, but that's what would you say? That's about ten pound line. That's really, isn't it? Really thin, that yeah. I won't go mess with feeder fishing with that on. It's a joke. But luckily, I was fishing strong. You know, fifteen pound line. So even though we were snag round all the branches and stuff like that, we still managed to get her in. 24 pounder. With three branches on. So that's two PBs. Two PBs, well done mate. <laughs> I didn't dream. All right, I'll try and get these rods back out. Morning. Just woken up. Had a pretty rough night with the weather. I'm still damp, it's cold. <laughs> but we've had two absolutely cracking fish there. Both had a PB. Um, my PB cart before that one was, I think it was 19 pound four. And that was 24 pound, what an epic cart. And uh, Rob's never even caught a catfish before, so that's a first for him. Well, I'm busting for a pee. I'm just waiting for this rain to ease off and then <laughs> I'll get up. After I had that carp, I reset all the rods. I've had a couple of bleeps since, but nothing much. And I've not heard Rob's uh, buzzers go either. So, um, had a bit of a mad couple of hours. I think that was about three, four o'clock that we had them two fish, so. Yeah. Successful 48 hours, I think. Right, so that's all our rigs back out and sorted. Just on for the second brew of the day. Fed the wildlife, fed the swans. Definitely not looking forward to packing up, <laughs> packing up all this wet tackle though. It's wet, it's muddy, it's sludgy, it's horrible. But, been a successful 48 hours I think. Not caught loads. We're not absolutely uh, piled them in but at least we've not blanked and the, the two fish that we actually did have were, were nice fish so it makes it worthwhile all the driving all the bait prep everything so we're going to have this last bit of a feed now we've packed pretty much everything that we can away apart from the bivvies i've just loaded up the barra to take the first load down to the car so it's nice and easy all i have to do i've left the rods out i've got my net still out there and i've got the unhooking mat i'll take that down last so that should just be one barrel full. Uh, once I've got all that in the car, we'll come back, I'll take the bivvy down, and that'll be us. So here we are at Cudmore, last day, last few hours. We've had a good 48 hours, to be honest. Thought it was gonna be dire at some points, but we pulled through with fish. Wes is just getting last cook on go. Bacon and sausage, Tesco's Bramley apples, sausages did the business. <laughs> <laughs> Saved us from hungry bellies. But yeah, it's been, it's been an absolutely awesome weekend. We've still got chance of summit, but it's looking a bit bleak now. But yeah, that catfish was absolutely unbelievable. I can't, can't believe they're fighting them. So glad that I managed to catch one. Wester's PB carp was absolutely amazing as well. Like, massive belly on it. Just stuff like that just makes it worth coming for, doesn't it? You know what I yeah. mean? You, it gives you a little bit of confidence in your methods as well. Yeah, it just shows as well you can catch so many species on. I just had a helicopter rig on. What well, I got that cat on. It's only a size six hook, Kamakura. But wow, yeah. That, yeah, you've, well, re what? you've done really well to land it on 15 pound line in a size six hook. Definitely. What a time to be alive. I hope you liked watching it. Yeah. Just want to yeah. say thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next West is Angling. But I'll let Rob finish it up. <laughs> I don't know. I think I was just jabbering on then. So yeah, <laughs> see <you there. laughs>